Yeah. If you take uh, even Roja, Rukmani, yeah, Rukmani yeah. is yeah, correct. Exactly. Correct. 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 He has got very bold lyrics. This time there was a big difference because Diljeet and Padiniti were actually singing songs. Yeah. There was no playing. The great singers, of course. <laughs> they were singing live, and the musicians were playing live. And obviously, Rahman sir had trained them. Like they had. I think for me, Punjabi music is not just Bangra. Yeah, yeah. And uh, most of the people just do the hey hey and bale bale bra and all this stuff. <laughs> Even Manu from me comes after two months and say, "Hey, you played me something, right? Can we listen to that together?" So you didn't respond to that. No, I didn't understand that. <laughs> Mr. Ali, Mr. Rahman, welcome to the Hindu. Uh, I'll begin with this, Mr. Rahman. Recently, you said something amusing. You described Amar Singh Chamkila as a very naughty picture from Imtiaz, and I find it a very interesting adjective to use for him uh, because uh, under the sort of gentle romantic cinema that he makes, there's this layer of a uh, subversive, mischievous filmmaker who wants to, you know, sort of, you know, mock, let's say, societal norms or you know, look at things a little differently. I think it it's there in all of us. Mm -hmm. Life will be boring at the base. Right. There's no humor or anything. And in fact, in this, uh, when he approached me for Chamkila, like there are songs of Chamkila mm -hmm. already. Mm -hmm. What am I going to do on it? <laughs> so we were just jamming here, and we're just talking about it. Why don't we talk about people passing comments, like how they mm -hmm. do, mm -hmm. you know, YouTube comments and right, yeah. stuff? All the gossip could become a song, and that's what happened. That's uh, Baja, and then Naram Khalja is again. Yes, right. It's a very similar kind of a approach, like a Broadway musical right. in Punjab. With right. all this gossip becoming uh, storytelling and mm -hmm. uh, filling the you know all the stuff, all right. the, it completes this picture of what, what who he is. Right. This is the first yeah. time you introduced this element, like of a like what he's saying, like a Broadway musical element where the characters in the back sort of provide commentary on on the action. Yeah, it is the first time in any yeah. of my films, mm. and it's actually his idea, and it really helped Chamkila because it also, as he said, serves to inform the audience about who he was. I have to ask you know the, a large part of Chamkila's legend. His lyrics had that sense of what we are talking mischief. about, that rivalry, that sense of mischief, mm -hmm. that sense of double on trans. Uh, Ishad is from Punjab. Uh, can you talk to me a little bit about weaving all of this in Naram Kalji's song? Uh, you know that also reflects on how, how women sort of responded all, also to his music. Interestingly, Ishad had also exposed the the naughty Punjabi lyrics. To me, over years, mm -hmm. in different things, and you know, when we were working in Tamasha, etc., he would often he would often quote that this lyric is from some song in Punjab. Mm -hmm. uh, interestingly, most of those songs that were naughty were female mm -hmm. songs, mm -hmm. and uh, for instance, Naram Kalja also is derived from a song, uh, which is a it's like a Punjabi song, very old Punjabi traditional type song that <coughs> Mera Nam Kalja Tadke. Mera naram kal ja tadke. So he had said that. Then I really liked it because, um, in a way, Chamkila also sang mischievous, naughty songs, and uh, there was that also explained why he was so popular with women because mm. women have always enjoyed even more than men this rivalry. Right. Yeah. And it's traditional, and not only in Punjab, in a, like in many places in the world. Weddings, uh, women weddings, in weddings yeah, sing so songs of that nature. If you take uh, even Roja, Rukmani, yeah, Rukmani yeah. is yeah, exactly. Correct, correct, correct. It has got very bold lyrics. Right? Very bold yes. lyrics. Shadi ke baad kya kya hua? And uh, but yeah, so so it became a very good connection. Uh, so yes, um, uh, it, it's very intriguing also that there is some sense of um, like enjoyment of mischief or uh, something which is um, not completely permitted by society. You know, you enjoy that. Everyone right. does at some point of time, and then it becomes it takes a larger dimension huh. because if you cross a certain boundary, then mm. you'll be criticized. If you keep going beyond, then you might even uh, have a fateful end. Which, uh, in fact, is the story of Chamkila. Mr. Rahman, I know musically you went deep into the research of rooted Punjabi folk music, and this is the first time you've done an album of this sort, mm -hmm. which is fully Punjabi. Can you take me through the journey, and you know what help did you have from Imtiaz during that process when you're researching the sound and all the traditions and you know the idiosyncrasies of Punjabi music in for for this soundtrack? So we just had uh, we brought in around seven to eight musicians hanging out here for a couple of days. And there were like four male singers, and then there were like eight, nine female singers. We were just having fun. We were just and a lot of instrument, uh, instruments and samplings, you know, the yeah. Alguza and the Tumbi, and, and uh, just to listen to the stuff and to see what the aura is. Because uh, Chamkila's stuff is Punjabi and it's very esoteric, it's mm. to that region. Mm. But if you're making a film, an Imtiaz Ali film, where India can see, the world can see, uh, it needs to have a bigger span of, you know, the musicality and sound. 
So I was looking at certain things, trying ideas, throwing it out. And so that it, it, it all evolved like that. Yeah. And then we felt like we should keep Chandkala songs pure, not yeah. tamper with it. Mm. Just note by note. Yeah. You also look at the history of a lot of the folk musicians in traditionally, like like there's a song that pays tribute to Bullet Shah from Punjab. Uh, did you look at their history and their journey? And yeah, I think for me Punjabi music is not just Bangra. Yeah, yeah. And uh, most of the people just do the hey hey and bale bale and brrrra and all this stuff. <laughs> which is fantastic because huh. it, it just lifts you up. Then I've heard Nusrat Sahib's Kavalis and the Sindhi songs, the Punjabi songs. Then I've heard uh, old uh, recording, archival recordings, you know. And somebody played me Chamkila's recordings around eight, nine years back. And they wanted to make the movie Chamkila that time. Mm -hmm. So all this uh, was there in my this thing. Then you know there's Sunrise Radio in, in London. And they have a lot of old Punjabi songs coming. You know, when I used to fast early morning, sometimes I used to listen to Sunrise Radio. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they have, uh, yeah. So it's a culmination of all this stuff and my wanting to do an album for a long time, a full Punjabi yes, album. Yes. So, and live recording is a large part of the yeah. soundtrack. How how was that experience of you know shooting with a crowd and also to have sound of that quality and getting that, and uh, you know, for him to also mix later and sort of make the tracks that they are. Yeah, for me, actually, in in when we were shooting Rockstar, we used to play almost the whole song Sardahak, let's say, mm -hmm. and we would have uh, Ranbir and the crew and and the cast performing on it. And so for the audience, the experience was as though they are watching uh, a concert. But the only difference was that this was recorded music and the actors were miming on it. Hmm. Right. Hmm. This time, there was a big difference because Diljeet and Pariniti were actually singing songs. Yeah. There was no playing. The great there singers, no. of course. <laughs> and, Even and Pariniti. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They were singing live and the musicians yeah. were playing live. And obviously, Rehman sir had trained them. Like they had... Uh, sung a lot in the studio over here to just get practice and uh, confidence also. But then they were just like we record live sound in dialogue and we do sync okay. sound. There was sync sound shooting of songs, and that is something which I haven't, I don't even know when it has happened right. last. Yeah. And Rahman sir also technically helped us. His engineer was there, yeah, uh, Hiral was on set trying to. Make sure that it's so my team was his, there. His hmm. team was fully there, so we, he brainstormed. Was this something challenging? There must have been some some aspect of recording live. No, I think the the world has improved so much. People are now aware of all the stuff, all the new gadgets which has come. It makes things much more easier. Yeah. Unlike before, where everything used to come distorted. Oh my God, we had to re-record this. So all the kids now, the newer kids, they have proper training centers. Right. We also train them. Right, right, right. I have to go back to the Rockstar soundtrack for a bit and. Most of the songs have been widely loved and discussed, but there's one I think uh, you, I never heard you guys talk about much, which is Orho, which is, uh, mm -hmm. you know, which is this really intense, what you call a rock power ballad, and there's also visually there's this strong, strong sort of sexual current also going on there, and it haunts me to still today. That song. Can you do you guys remember how that came together and how that song was conceived and created? Yeah, I, we <laughs> can, and we used to call it heartbeat. Acha. And because the, the pulsing of that was like that, I think, and Rahman sir, and so we used to call it, the, I, I think you might have labelled it heartbeat, heartbeat because it was the uh, inspiration maybe okay. at that point of time. Do you remember his brief like for, for that time? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't remember. I remember having a flute, so uh, almost uh, like a mantra right. going in, very dark and mm -hmm. kind of thing. It was a terrible, uh, um, in the way that it was an overwhelming experience to be in this song. The involvement that we had while during shooting also. Mm -hmm. I think I have overexposed myself to this song and this song to myself. This is a song that I can't hear anymore. <laughs> it's uh, like, it's really like that. Today, actually, I was sampling through some of the old songs mm -hmm. and I pressed this and this, dung, dung, dung. I was like, <laughs> Shut it. I can't hear it anymore. It's that intense. And right. the dark yeah. zone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. yeah, I remember the first time listening to it in the theatres and there's something that was communicating to you, like really, like this is almost like a feral kind of energy yep. and a frustration there yeah. in, that, in that track, which is awesome. Yeah. yeah. How do you guys communicate over the years? And I know, you know, music is something you can get very technical about, like with notations and things like that, or you can talk very esoterically and philosophically. It's, it's such a wide field in how. What is the love language that Imtiaz Ali and Rahman share? Rahman sir uses very casual and very normal language. 
and uh, the larger communication is through i think when some music is playing then everything is understood because music is such a thing it can't be actually explained in words because if you use words i might understand something else and someone mm. else might understand something else yeah the sound yeah but the sound is, is if i have something a jam session mm. i just play it on he responds to that stuff mm. so i don't tell him i'm going to use reggae i'm going to use this i'm going to use uh, d flat and ninth <laughs> sharp and 13th <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't need to know right right <laughs> But uh, he he downplays it every time. He says that I'm on surrender mode with you. You know, whatever you give, he'll take. You know, it's almost like a same way. I think he has this uh, amazing ability to spot melodies or something which vibes to the movie. Right. I like to be not tied to the movie. Sometimes I go wild. Huh. So if whether it's Mr. Mani Ratnam or Imtiaz, you know, I just go wild and see how they react to it. Right. And sometimes you know, even Mani Ratnam he comes after. Two months is like, hey, you played me something, right? Can you can we listen to that together? So you didn't respond to that. No, I didn't understand that. Uh, right. <laughs> so it's something I feel like sometimes it it uh, widens the whole spectrum uh, of a movie uh, when you have things, and because people define things success and that becomes boring. So we have wider things. It's interesting for even the audience. Who oh, I never expected that. Right. Has he in. gotten more frank or more bolder in terms of if, if he has an input or if he just doesn't like it? Let's say. No, no I just people. I want people to not like it <laughs> because I also filter a lot and give it. I want people to not like it so that I can do more. Hmm. And uh, even in this one, I think there was a song which is very similar to Vidakaro, hmm. hmm. which was the love song, and I found it very boring. <laughs> the song boring for the situation because I said, why do, let's do something better. I mean, I try something better. You always have this. What we have, let's try something. In this, Chamkila has been nailed as your comeback, and I don't mean in the shallow sense that the last two films didn't click with people like that. But they feel this sort of goes back to a root of who you are philosophically and emotionally, or as an artist. It's a journey of a story of an artist who you know who went and put himself out there and suffered as consequences of it. Uh, do you see this as a return to or something very primal or something very basic about who you are as a, as a thinker, as a person? Well, uh, we shall see. I think <laughs> uh, people should <laughs> watch the film before. I think he's uh, reinvented yeah. himself. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. that's what it is. Like, if I do the same thing again and again, I'll have more trouble doing something fresh. But I've changed the whole placement of it, my energy of artist artistry to another place that forces me to think different. And then many uh, unusual things come together, and it refreshing with the audience too. Oh my God! This is very different from what he's done before. Mm -hmm. Because if the moment they predict you is when we get boring. Right. <laughs> it was a very fresh experience, I must say. It was not something I'd done before because there was, uh, I wasn't writing from imagination. I was writing from research, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I didn't mm -hmm. want to change any of that because it was now a like a new fun for me mm -hmm. to not imagine the scene but try to discover it while uh, from the people that I'm talking to Chamkila about. So it was an New experience for me, for sure. Right. Also, I also asked this because this was troubled time in Punjab's history with mm. the militancy and with what happened. One of the theories was that he was killed by Sikh militants. Uh, how much of you're not a political filmmaker per se, but how much did the background of and the turmoil of that time influence your story? And how much do we see of that in in, in the film? Is no, the turmoil influenced the life of Chamkila for sure. It was uh, it had a devastating uh, result on Chamkila's life ultimately. So obviously it affects the storytelling. And for me to not say it is one thing, but to not know it is unpardonable. I have to not have opinion, but at least have the base knowledge about what was happening at that point of time. Uh, never an opinion. I think it's best to not have an opinion, um, but uh, definitely the know-how of what happened. But you did speak to people. Who Lots of yes, yes. Like about co eighty-four, uh, about this yeah. whole controversy, about various sides, and uh, my interest was Chamkila. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, uh, but uh, yes, I did inform myself, and it's some sometimes also in Punjab because there is always some or the other fresh controversy that. Keeps yeah. cropping up, unfortunately. Then the whole history also gets rewound, and then you are uh, made aware that 1947 में क्या हुआ था, 84 में क्या हुआ था. And it's just not local to let's say just Punjab. Although we have cases like that, but worldwide we've seen a lot of the great musicians, their lives intersect 
with let's say the direction that a country is taking with let's say uh, something uh, like you know something big happening in the sure. st how society itself evo is evolving and we see this musician who become uh, like an icon of that particular time or a social class or a social turmoil is music like inextricable from what the time and the space that it kind of emerges from historically i think yeah music plays a i mean it could build societies it could also kill societies <laughs> i feel like the energies which music gives mm -hmm. if you like it if you take the 60s of you know what beatles were doing yes, imagine yes, yeah. all those things and you take uh, in my life the first 10 years of my life mathuji salam came in okay. the sense of pride of being an indian came with that song what i did bharat bala mm -hmm. sony music yes yeah and then the from 2000 there was 911 and you know the whole decade was the aftermath of that yes, influence yeah. of what we could do to heal the world yeah right yeah and then 2010 to 20 years are different india becoming the post oscars and all this stuff mm -hmm. uh, how individuals were you know excelling mm -hmm. you know individuals become big ceos and all this stuff how right, right. inspiration of uh, that india is made up of these individuals who, are, who could be really powerful yeah. you don't yeah. need anybody <laughs> yeah. and that is so inspiring and now we are in the time of ai yeah the how, how my thing is how can we use that to empower Uh, all the failures of uh, you know everybody us actually to the younger generation how can we empower them uh, how can we pull uh, you know alleviate poverty right. Right. i think this is the kind of which is interesting for me to how do you use these tools which are extraordinary to do something extraordinary right. which has failed again and again with humanity which is getting richer poor getting poorer anyway music also for me i think is an influence of all right. you know, this is me In this, we know that Netflix was on board before you went to Flaws. Uh, did that knowledge that it's going to come on a streaming platform affect the filmmaking, or did you? Was there any more freedom that you experienced because of that? You thought, okay, now we don't have we don't have that theatrical thing in our head. So, did that affect your filmmaking anyway? Well, once uh, when I went to set to shoot, I knew it would. This will be on Netflix, and people will. Um, so, I kind of made a resolve to make it even more cinematic. it was not a logical thing mm. it was just going in the reverse way and saying mm. that oh this is not going to be seen mostly on a cinema screen i'll make it <laughs> even more yeah. worthy of a cinema screen and more theatrical just for a zid right um but i'm glad that i did because i think that i personally also choose those films even on the social media on on um, on a digital platform which are more cinematic the other thing that i took advantage of is the fact that you know i've used a lot of multimedia in the film for instance mm -hmm. there is uh, titles on screen to okay. explain what the punjabi lyrics of chamkila mean then there is also uh, 2d animation so there are some sketch animations that happen and they support live live action at some points of time to just give a certain feeling to the growth of chamkila let's say or things that were happening So I don't know I think it was a good first step for me to do it on a digital platform mm -hmm. but I don't see that it cannot happen on cinema now I know but it was a good step to have taken on a digital platform first right right I got nostalgic as he was talking about you know he's summarizing sort of how his music has intersected with our lives and yeah, yeah uh, where were you when let's say Rangila had released and uh, well, where I, were you in life uh, at that time this I, 95 Well I was in uh, my friend's room in YMCA huh. when in in Bombay in Kolaba when he made me lie down on his bed and he said I'll I'll play you music and that is when he played Roja Why lie down I don't know just have this experience <laughs> this trance experience and he like there were two beds his roommate was not there so Anil Nair and me in different beds and we played just close your eyes evening time and just listen and we heard the <laughs> album the whole album actually sorry it was tiruda tiruda i don't know how i heard that first yeah, yeah. i heard tiruda tiruda first and then i was like are what is this is, it, is this music what's going on <laughs> so he said no no first listen then we we'll lucky <laughs> <laughs> my path was very clear <laughs> he didn't have 10 million composers <laughs> right uh, 
is there an aspect of life uh, beyond music where you guys bond a lot it could be something as simple as parenting or food or finance or anything you know where over the years you guys bond a lot beyond except music except for financing the rest <laughs> 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 food and parenting and everything else we are trying to work on a project actually like a series of something which is very special mm -hmm. it's very tough to crack we still trying to do. see how it's going how to crack it thank you so much thank, thank you, you. thank you very much thank you